Jay Baba, uh, you the listeners are going to hear something new in these readings today. Uh, several of my poems are rhymed, and this came about naturally, and I enjoyed it. So I think there's two or three poems that I'll read today that are rhymed. Now this first one, I woke up one morning with the word God send in my mind. And I was thinking about that word. You don't hear it that often anymore. But for some reason, I felt that I had heard that word quite a bit in my life. And I thought about that. Maybe I hadn't heard it. Maybe I just thought it. In any event, when I had that thought, I looked at Merriam-Webster's dictionary for the meaning. And the meaning is an unexpected thing or event that is particularly welcome and timely, as if sent by God. So this is the poem that I wrote, God Send. With him we expect the unexpected, knowing he is the giver of all. What appears impossible or difficult is the gift he keeps giving. Opposites work for equipoise. Balance is the key to life. All is an opportunity to remember him, knowing everything comes from him. Sit back and watch the show. There is nothing really to see. Impressions are there until they are not. Hold on to him through it all. Those who talk don't know. Those who know don't talk. There is God send every moment. Be with him. He is here now. This next one is titled Eunice, for Eunice Emery. Eunice Emery was a 13th century mystic, poet, and Sufi. And there is a great show on Netflix. I rarely recommend to anybody to watch anything on television. But uh, there is a 45 episode show. Uh, this was uh, done in Turkey as Turkish subtitles. Uh, it's two seasons, 20... English two, subtitles. Uh, English subtitles. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it starts a little slow, the first few episodes, but it takes off and gets going. And it, it, it's at the same time that Shams and Tabriz and Rumi were, were in that general vicinity. Uh, Eunice is a dervish. It shows the dervish lodge. It shows the master, the sheikh. And there's even a must that appears in both the first and second year. I, I, I really recommend it. So this poem is titled Eunice. Don't believe almost anything you hear. Words have little or no meaning. Most people follow a fiction, a narrative of their own making. The heart is the house of God. The lover worships there day and night. What does he care about the world? Its problems and complications are null and void. Flattery becomes fashion. Separation follows pride. Likes attract likes, then seek to multiply. No one is justified before God. If you want to be with him, sever every faulty connection. Let love and love slaves be your only friends. Die every moment and find yourself in him.
those who have spent any time in India will recognize some of the images in this one. Eyes on you. Sounds first. Horns blaring. Rickshaws. Tatas. Marutis. The smell of cow dung. Cut fruit and incense. We are strolling the lanes and by lanes. The city, state, and country are not mine, but somehow more familiar, more dear. We are talking, walking, laughing. There is a rhythm to our ramble, a spontaneous, unthinking perambulation. My friends beside me greet their friends. We traverse the marketplace, the bazaar, stopping for eggs, bread, garlands of flowers, the necessities of daily life. Returning home, we use them all in reverse order. We place the fragrant garlands, carefully draping your photograph. Prayers are said, hands folded, eyes on you. Though I was dreaming, I know you heard us. How is it that I made this journey without legs? How is it now that I am awake? There are tears on my pillow, your sweet fragrance everywhere. The longing. I should say before I start this, that as a child, my mother read to me from the lives of the saints. And so this, this poem Is this the, bo the it. book that St. That Francis Brabazon mentions, or is it a famous book, The Lives of the Saints? The Lives of the Saints was was a book that was very popular, particularly among Catholics. Okay. And, it's and not the Desert Fathers, that's another book. That's another one. Okay. That's another one. This is titled The Longing. Yeah. My mother sat on the side of the bed. I knew by the cover of the book what she would read that night. The color was deeper than crimson. I associated the lives of the saints with pain, blood, and longing. I still listen when I hear these lives told. I still wonder at the source of their struggles. Light and darkness, darkness and light, the eternal battle between higher and lower, the twisted, unforgiving paths they took, all looking for the same door. How could I know as a child the longing these saints lived? My mother's care and intonation revealed more than the pictures on the pages, faces contorted with yearning looking upwards to heaven and beyond. Now I live with my own longing. No one would ever know or guess. I carry it without weight or burden. I have even fooled myself, except when I hear your name or see your sweet face before me. The cost of love. The lover knows nothing but love. After all, love must love. The gift of love is expensive. There is always loss for such gain. Some throw sticks on the fire, hoping oxygen is enough to get it going. Others try incendiaries 
to acquire a proper burn. All too soon, the flames guttering out. Every lover has a beloved. There is an alchemy, a transmutation involved. How else can lover and beloved become one? The lover severs himself from his self. The lover joyfully suffers immolation. The bellows of the heart burning bright. The lover's sacrifice is his reduction. He prays the fire become an inferno. What is the cost of such love? What is the price of loss and gain? Embers glowing, then nothing but ash becoming dust. Don't believe anything. Turn off your television. Throw out your newspaper. Don't believe anything. This is the age of self-advertisement, self-aggrandizement, self-promotion. Everyone is an expert at appearances, semblances. Everyone telling stories shaped by impressions of their own making. The world is never as it seems. Fear and uncertainty create images, phantasms of the mind. Even the cave dwellers knew the writing was not on the wall. Some fill their homes with food, bulking up for the big one. Others inoculate themselves, attempting to protect themselves from whatever, from whatever ills and woes may be coming their way. Still others conspire, perspire, and create divisions. Future dwellers, never living in the present, which as we know, is ever beautiful and contains everything that we came here for. This, this next one, I hope most of you have read or seen the movies, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I know you have, Chris. Mm -hmm. I know you're a fan. Yeah. So, this next one, I have read probably, uh, I know I read fully three times and then I've seen the movies at different points in my life when I was in college, when I was young a young man and then maybe 15 years ago at the time the movies came out uh i, I read through each time and joined it more than the previous time but i was thinking the other day that the word love is not really said no and it's not it, thank I you Th thank you chris and yet i was thinking and this is what I read as an introduction. I don't remember reading the love throughout the entire Lord of the Rings, and yet having read it three times over the years of my life, what is the story of Frodo and Sam? It's it, the theme of the Hobbits, really. Yeah. It's, it, the whole theme. Yeah. But, but it's all about love. Right. The, especially among the Hobbits. It's so beautiful. You're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So e Even Sam going to get married. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. So the title, Nothing But Love. We are hobbits on a hobbit quest. Dear Frodo and Sam are doubly blessed. Ring bearers avoiding Sauron's eye. Leaving the comforts of the Shire without a goodbye. How many golems, balrogs, and orcs along the way. Strider providing direction and demons to slay. Aragorn, Avatar, appearing when times are bleak. Gandalf the wizard assists 
with what hobbits seek. It is a journey with myriad woes and foes. This much the lover already knows. One can never turn away, never turn back. Frodo the Chosen going straight into the black. What travails and tribulations along the way? Horrible, awful imagination at play. One must give up everything, even Shire's moonbeams. Nothing is ever what it seems, especially in dreams. One might catch a glimpse of the path like none other, reading Lord of the Rings from cover to cover. Better to dive deep within and finally discover Ring giver and ring receiver, our beloved and lover. No one will ever know. Shut your mouth and keep it closed. Never speak it out loud. Never disclose. Keep it up your sleeve always hidden. Forget you ever heard it. Let it remain unbidden. Let it trouble you and consume you until there is nothing left of you. Befriend pain and torment. Make them your daily testament. What a gift, this suffering and woe. Always smile, and no one will ever know that this life is worth every pain, without which, how could there be soul's gain? As I write this, I hear the songbird singing. The sky is ashen, the weather unpromising. O oh God, I have emptied the furniture from this house. Slay me and end this cat and mouse. You say that this is life at its best. You are the master and this is your test. Should I sink like the setting sun in the west? Or rise before you? my head on your chest. This next one comes from a, an apocalyptic dream I had probably 50, 50 some years ago. It's titled The Fire Within. I dreamed before the pastel dawn broke night's black heart once again. The promise of day, just a kiss, a suffused ray of purple light. Standing and gazing from this summit, I watched as the world caught fire. Undulating waves spread across the plains, licking, then consuming all that stood in its way. Primordial ooze of flame touching the bruised sky. It was then I heard the sound, an orchestra untuned, without a conductor, the noise resounding, resonating, reverberating, a collective anguish, an asylum of grief and suffering. My head could not contain such an assault. I awoke from this unmerciful dream with a fitful start. My eyes saw your face smiling before me. The first blush of light revealed your radiant form. Did I not hear your silent voice say, I will light a fire within you. 
so you will always find your way. This world is nothing but my divine play. Now this, this next one is, a, is kind of astounding. A, Anita got from a friend of hers uh, a greeting, a text that said, Happy Moon Day. And it was Monday. It was a Monday. And I was thinking to myself, Moon Day? Is that where Monday comes from? So I looked it up. And Monday comes from the old English Moonendag, named after Mani, M-A-N-I, which was the North personification of the moon. And Saul was her brother, the sun. So this was sort of an epiphany to me. I, I never knew this. And so I began to think about Mani and uh, and I began to think about the moon and the sun. And this poem is titled, The Moon Around the Sun. And you can take this as money, or you can take it as the moon. It works on different levels. The moon around the sun. Your face is always there to see. You never fade. Your orbit and rotation are matchless. Your dance is perfection. The sun always shines on you. Your dark side forever hidden. The Creator made you as a reminder to all. Cheerfulness is but one of your names. You are the shining one and the necklace of stars. Though the earth tilts and continues spinning, you are transfixed by the sun, the gem of the celestial heavens. Your death made you all the brighter. Stationary you are. Equipoise is your crown. All long to see you, to be guided by you. You are sister to your brother's son. Musicians, poets, mystics, invoke your name. How glorious your shining light. How divine your nimbus and glow. In all the galaxies, there are none but you the moon around the sun. The dungeon of this world. We are all cellmates in the dungeon of this world, imprisoned by our impressions, incarcerated by thoughts, words, and deeds. Anger, Cell block seven. Lust, solitary confinement. Greed, possessions, penitentiary. Those sentenced do not appear before a judge. They do not face sentence in a court of law. They are bound by their actions, by the cruelty of the tongue, by the separations of the mind. We are like birds in a cage, locked up, doing time, carrying the weight of an imaginary ball and chain, detained, in custody, self-exiled. Freedom is a contradiction in terms. The only way out, the only release, is to become his slave, to carry out his every command. He takes the fortunate one from cellmate to soulmate. 
He turns the key in the dungeon door. Soul's purpose fulfilled once more. Forevermore, forevermore. The world gone mad. I dreamed the entire world had gone mad. Not Mad Hatters at a Mad Tea Party mad, but Full Tilt Bip, Full Tilt Boogie, Jekyll and Hyde mad. Yup, Screaming Yellow Zonkers closed the windows mad. People were talking very quick and rapid. Words coming out like machine guns and just as vapid. The voices and conversations nightmare strange. Night walkers jacked up on steroids, completely deranged. Nobody was really doing much communicating, much like what happens on the phone with call waiting. Everyone moving way too fast for their own good running like a hopped-up jockey on a hopped-up thoroughbred would. Our town become, became one big street party unorthodox. Every soul a one-man, one-woman, blaring, blasting boombox. Everyone talking, ranting about what they knew. Didn't seem like much from my point of view. Suddenly, I realized how it would all end. Not with a whimper or bang or the proverbial portend, but rather with a silence that's always fresh and never odd. Mind stopped after all is always God. This last one is taken from uh, an experience at Marizad many years ago where I was standing at the back doors of Mondeley Hall, standing there alone, looking over to the porch. There was a group of people around Mara on the porch. And if I were a painter, I'd be able to paint the beauty of the way I saw all the bodies poised. Uh, but I've tried to create in words what I, what I saw that day. It's titled, He Was So Beautiful. I could not hear their voices. I was too far away. I could see the expressions on their faces. They revealed all I needed to know. I have captured that image in my heart, the picture more clear than any camera could capture. Never fading, though the years pass quickly, the memory growing brighter with the passage of time. What I saw transcended space. It stepped outside those bounds and binds. Only love has the power to surpass all. Only love has the majesty to eclipse illusion. I remember now what I saw on that porch. It comes back to me that I heard her voice. Just four words floated across the breeze. Those four words etched forever on my heart. I saw the others wrapped in their attention. Their faces and bodies receptacles of light. The porch became an effulgence, an illumination. I heard her say, he was so beautiful. And that's it.
Jay Bobbitt. Jay Bobbitt, really nice. Thank, Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Chris, as always.